You know, the Godfather was romanticized even to mob guys on the street. I'm telling you, people carried themselves differently after they saw the way Don Corleone carried himself, the way Michael, you know, carried himself. It, it was a, a romanticized view of that life. There's no doubt about it. And the power that's portrayed, you know, power is intoxicating. You know, if you can be around people with power, it's intoxicating. And, you know, I got to tell you this, you know, a lot of people wanted to be around us. A lot of people were drawn to my dad, drawn to Joe Colombo, drawn to Lucky Luciano, drawn to Meyer Lansky. Why? Because they exuded power. They had charisma, you know. And I'll tell you, even myself, I mean, I had a lot of people around me. I didn't scare them away. They wanted to be around us because they thought they can benefit in some way. Hey everyone, welcome to another sit down with Michael Francis. Hope everybody is doing well. All is good. Very blessed on this end. As always, I give God all the praise, honor, glory, and thanksgiving for that because he deserves it, especially in my case. Anyway, see what I got on now. This nice uh, jacket, like it very much. Wise and the wise guy, most of you know, that's me and my dear friend, Chaz Palminteri. We have our own platform. Many of you subscribe to it already. If you haven't, please do so now. If you like the line of clothing that we now have, I think you can buy it off the website. There's links there. We have hoodies and t-shirts and sweatshirts and jackets like this. So go and see it. And there's even a picture of me and Chaz in the back of some of the uh, items. So you might enjoy that. But uh, like I said, just go on that, subscribe. Wise and the wise guy, you can get all this material and all these uh, beautiful clothes. Uh, I have to say something. This is kind of very funny to me. You know, I did this interview with Pierce Morgan, and there were a lot of questions. I mean, comments, I should say, probably well over 2,000. I mean, the video has done very well to this point. And the very first comment was about my appearance. And at the time I looked at it, there was 167 other comments involving my appearance. So I started to read it. You know, people are very complimentary. A lot of you say, you know, Michael, you look good for your age. Thank you for that. I am 72 years old and I appreciate those compliments but some of the things that I was reading you know there was a guy on there that said I had total reconstructive uh, uh, work done on my entire face that my whole jawline was reconstructed and all this kind of stuff people are saying I get Botox and I've had all this work done and all this kind of stuff people can I tell you something I've had none of that done the only thing that's happened to me I've broken my nose three times first time 12-year-old playing first base, kid throws a ball, the sun got in my eyes, boom, hits me in the nose, I go down. I was practically knocked out, had my nose done at that point in time. I was born with a deviated septum, if you know what that is. One side of my nose was blocked, so I had surgery on that. And the third time was about 17, 18 years ago because the deviated septum came back. So I had to have surgery to have it done again. Really no reconstruction on the nose, even though it looks different. You know, hopefully it looks better. Other than that, I've had nothing done. Everybody, oh, he's had Botox, and I know this, and he's done that. You know what he showed me? So many people comment like they're authorities and they know something, and they really don't. You know, but I appreciate it. To me, it's, you know, it's a form of flattery, you know, so thank you for that. You know, some of us Italians, if we don't abuse ourselves, and this goes for all of you. I never uh, smoked in my life, smoked a couple of cigars when my kids were born. That's about it. Celebration, that's it. Never did drugs in my life, never. Tried to get a decent amount of sleep, at least as much as I needed. Never got obese, never got too overweight. No good for that. That's, that's something that ages you. And I never abused alcohol. You know, I like my wine, yes. Never really drank anything else, but I never abused anything. And you know what? In the long run, it helps. And then spending eight years in prison, you know, that might have contributed to it because fortunately, I was able to deal with it and I never overate and I ate the right food and all that kind of stuff. So please, you know, you can say what you want, but I've had no work done, nor do I intend to. I don't like any of that stuff. My wife will tell you that. You know, don't like it at all. But anyway, it was funny and humorous to, to uh, read it. Just thought I'd comment on it. Shedded the jacket because it was getting a little warm in here. Got a lot of lights on in this studio. Before again, I want to thank people for, um, you know, the compliments I've been getting on Franz East Wine. Thank you. Hopefully it's going to be all across the country fairly soon. We're doing a good job on it. We're uh, pretty far ahead of where we would be, you know, normally. But things are really breaking our way. So thank you for that. And Mafia Democracy, we've had a run on the books. I think it's because of all the interviews that I've been doing lately with Jesse Waters and Newsmax and uh, Pierce Morgan, who was terrific. 
music. Uh, and the compliments and the comments I've been getting are very rewarding to me because the reason I wrote the book was really to make people aware of what's going on in our government. You got to be able to recognize things that are going on. And uh, I just tell it like it is from my perspective and my experience and people are appreciating it very much. So you can go on Amazon, you can go on, you know, any of the sites here, we have a link to the book, but thank you very much. I appreciate all the good comments and the goodwill that are coming from that. You know, I, I like to read my mornings. You know, I get up very early. It was always, always been an early riser in my life. And I do my reading. I do all my stuff. I do a Bible study, kind of prepare me for the day. Hopefully it makes me a little bit better. I like to be informed. I like to see the news, what's going on. You know, I read a lot of the New York papers uh, that comes out three hours ahead of where I am here in California. So I get up to date on everything. And so I look for articles and content. And I found something that I think is, um, is really pertinent and important. You know, people, with respect to Cosa Nostra, you know, mafia in this country, uh, I never glorify that life. I talk about it. I do have some fond memories about it. I grew up in it. I spent 20 years in it. So there are some fond, mem fond memories about it, but people, I don't glorify it in any way. I discourage young people from getting involved in it. I speak out against it. I don't talk bad about the guys because I don't think that's my uh, position to do it. I was one of them at one point in time. I just happen to be very blessed. Everybody has had their own issues in that life, and I just rather not talk bad about them. That's just how I am. I try not to talk bad really about anybody other than when I see people doing harm to us right now, and that's why I speak out about government. I speak out about some of the atrocities that are happening to our young people. I speak out about the border. I speak out about these things because I think they're important to talk about. I really mean that. Just to enlighten us so that we're prepared and we can make America the right place to live in and a better place to live in because we love this country. But other than that, I don't talk bad about people. Um, but, you know, uh, and I say that's an evil life, Cousin Arstra. I've said that many times because it destroys families and people do get destroyed from it. So that's my position. I've been fortunate to get out of it now. But here's something that I think is really important. I think you're going to enjoy it. And uh, let me give you the title of the article. It says, Hollywood's depiction of the mafia in movies and TV has played a significant role in shaping public perception about the mafia. So true. Where do most of you people know about that life? You don't encounter the mob. Maybe in New York, maybe in Chicago, maybe in some of the hot cities. Some of you have encountered it, but mostly it's from movies, it's from TV series, it's from news headlines, it's from all of that stuff. You really don't have a personal experience with, you know, guys in the mob. And uh, whether it be good or bad, you don't know. So it's the movies. And the movies, you know, form our perception about a lot of things in life. That's just what they do. We see a movie, we see a TV show, and we say, well, that's how it really is. Not all the time, obviously. But certainly in the Mafia, it's formed your perception of it. And I'm going to write five things that this person talked about, and then I'm going to comment on it. And you tell me what you think about it. So here are a few ways in which the, uh, Hollywood has influenced public perception about the Mafia. Number one, romanticizing the Mafia. Come on, we know that. You know, people saw The Godfather 1 and Godfather 2. It was a romantic view of that life, even with all the violence and everything else. Let me read what he wrote. Many films and TV shows have portrayed the mafia in a glamorous and romanticized manner, focusing on the extravagant lifestyles, remember The Godfather, the power, again, Godfather, and loyalty within these criminal organizations. Now, you saw disloyalty, but you also saw loyalty in The Godfather. This portrayal has often made the Mafia seem intriguing and appealing to some viewers, uh, to many viewers, I can tell you that, you know, uh, throughout the world. I mean, I've been everywhere. You know, I've done almost 2,000 speaking engagements over the past 25 years, in, not only in America, but in countries all over the world, from Singapore to Australia to Europe to the Bahamas to the Caribbean, Bulgaria, you name it. I've been there in many cases. And there is a tremendous intrigue in that life. And in the United Kingdom, they don't have the mafia, but they have the movies. Bulgaria, no mafia, but the movies. The Bahamas, the same thing. Singapore. But wow, you know, the way people received me because they wanted to hear the stories based upon what they saw in movies and television. And yeah, they do have a romantic view. Come on. You know, The Godfather was romanticized even to mob guys on the street. I'm telling you, people carried themselves differently after they saw the way Don Corleone carried himself, the way Michael, you know, carried himself. 
It, it was a, a romanticized view of that life. There's no doubt about it. And the power that's portrayed, you know, power is intoxicating. You know, if you can be around people with power, it's intoxicating. And, you know, I got to tell you this, you know, a lot of people wanted to be around us. A lot of people were drawn to my dad, drawn to Joe Colombo, drawn to Lucky Luciano, drawn to Meyer Lansky. Why? Because they exuded power. They had charisma, you know. And I'll tell you, even myself, I mean, I had a lot of people around me. I didn't scare them away. They wanted to be around us because they thought they can benefit in some way, whatever the reason was. And a lot of this, you know, is true, and Hollywood has depicted it in that way. Now, there are some people that are immediate turnoff. Even the guys in the mob, you don't want to be around them. There's some guys, you know, I just say, they weren't the most pleasant people to be around, you know. But the movies portray it in such a way where the money, the power, the intrigue, you know, it's romanticized in a big way. And look, loyalty, loyalty, when you hear loyalty, when you hear, I got your back, you got mine, you know, that's romanticized and you want to be part of that. And Hollywood has portrayed the mob in that way and many people are drawn to it. Number two, humanizing the characters. Well, you know, listen, you know, there's nothing more important in any medium than humanizing the characters so that you can relate to them in some way. You know, when I speak, even though I'm a mob guy and the audience that I'm speaking to, we, we've led such different lifestyles. But when I talk about my family, when I talk about issues that I had with my son, when I talk about the love of my father, when I talk about my faith, when I talk about things that happened to me in, life, in my life, well, I'm humanizing myself because I am human and I go through some of the same things that other people go through, even though I had a very different lifestyle. It started out with The Sopranos. What made that series so great? It wasn't the business stuff. You know, yeah, okay, that's part of it. But it was the humanizing of Tony Soprano. You know, the issues that he had with his wife, the issues that he had with his kids, you know, his wife, you know, Carmela, you know, it humanized these characters, you know, and that's what people are drawn to in a way. Even if the, you know, because people relate to people, you know, people's problems, people's issues, people everyday stuff. Well, Hollywood does that. Let me continue. Hollywood has often portrayed mafia characters as complex individuals with their own set of values, a strong sense of family, and a code of honor. Yes, because to a great degree, it was true. We did have our own set of values. You know, some of it not so good. Yes, we killed people in that life. But we all said, hey, we're taking an oath. We understand if we violate the policies and the rules of this life, we may pay for it. Okay, with our lives. If we violate another man's, made man's wife, daughter, sister, mother, we're in trouble. If we, you know, if we do drugs during my era, and please don't hit me again for this, during my era, if we do drugs, we could pay for it with our lives. There was that code of honor, you know, that we had among. Now, was it broken? Yes, of course. The guys, you know, we, we, we already know that, okay? But when it's portrayed in Hollywood many, many times, it looks intoxicating. And that's the truth. You know, this portrayal can make viewers empathize with these characters and overlook some of the criminal activities they engage in. Yeah, some people think some of the criminal activities are cool. You know, listen, I defrauded the government out of a lot of money. Some people think that's cool, you know. I don't know, you know, and I'm not saying it's right or anything like that. But, you know, when you humanize these characters and you... You see that they have family lives and they go through things and maybe they grew up a certain way and that's why they were attracted to the life, whatever. You know, you humanize the characters and you relate to them. So your perception of mob guys comes largely from what you're seeing on the screen. Number three, emphasizing loyalty and brotherhood. Movies and TV shows about the mafia often highlight the loyalty and brotherhood within these organizations. Well, they're supposed to because that's what it's supposed to be all about. Again, is it violated? Of course, it's street stuff and people, you know, do the wrong thing and they do break the code. Look, I broke Omerta. I'm here speaking to you. We know the story. So, yes, we break the code. But it's based upon loyalty. We're told straight out. This is what it's all about. This portrayal can create a sense of admiration and respect for the strong bonds formed among members despite their criminal activities. And, yeah, there is something to say about that. Look... When you have loyalty and respect among one another, uh, people admire that, you know? These are great qualities to have. And so sometimes you see that and you just ignore the criminal activities because you say, hey, you know what? 
look at these guys. They're powerful. They respect each other. They have each other's backs. So people are, uh, you know, they're enlightened by that. They like it. They enjoy it. You know, what could I say? Glorifying violence. The portrayal of violent acts committed by mafia members in movies and TV shows can sometimes glamorize and glorify violence. I think so. You know, I think it has done that. Look, in the Godfather scene, let's face it, at the end, you know, at the baptism, when uh, Michael is getting rid of all his enemies, I think that was well glamorized. I think people were rooting for Michael. They said, hey, kill all of these guys. You know, they were plotting against you. They did the wrong thing. They tried to assassinate your father. You know, they want to get into the drug business. And so the, the you know, the violence, the killing of these people was, well, hey, they deserve that. You know, it was intoxicating to many people. Nobody saw Michael as the villain at all. They saw him as a hero because he was killing his enemies. You know, so it was glamorized in a way. But let's face it, murder is murder, people. And it should never be glamorized. You know, let's get that straight. It should never be glamorized. And you know what? In reality, it's not glamorous at all. I can tell you that firsthand. It's not. Not glamorous at all. So the movies, you know, do depict it in a different way. They make heroes out of killers, heroes out of murderers, and that should never happen, okay? So if you have that perception, get rid of it. This can desensitize viewers, viewers to the real-life consequences of these actions and create a perception that violence is an essential part of the Mafia lifestyle. Is it an essential part? It is part of the Mafia lifestyle. There's no doubt about it, but it's ugly. I don't think anybody really enjoys it, and those people that do enjoy it, there's something wrong with them. You know, I've said this many times. We, we talk about Roy DeMeo because, listen, you know, allegedly he killed 200 people. You know, the Gemini, you know, style, you know that thing. But I say this, Roy DeMeo would have been a serial killer whether he was in the Mafia or not. That's just who he was. The Mafia did not make him that person. And I can tell you that this was not a first cause of action. Not with my bosses, not with my father, not with me, certainly. It was not a first cause of action, you know, because murder is ugly and it should be avoided at all costs. But you know what? It is part of the mafia lifestyle. And I think the way it's depicted in movies, people say, hey, he deserved it. That's good. It's a great thing. The movies do that. In reality, not good. Perpetuating stereotypes. Hollywood has often relied on stereotypes when portraying the mafia, such as the Italian-American mobster with a thick accent and a love for pasta. Look, we all love pasta. My wife is Mexican-American. She loves pasta. But yeah, I mean, we're Italians. Of course we love it. A thick accent, more of a thick Brooklyn accent, I would say, you know, or a thick Boston accent, or maybe from Providence, because these are street guys, you know. Most of them are not college-educated. You know, they don't have a degree in that way. They get their accent from the street. It took me years to lose mine, you know, living out in California for this long, but that's how they portrayed. So, yeah, there is a stereotype, the, golden, uh, the gold change. You know, at one time we used to wear these warm-up suits, these track suits, and, you know, so, you know, that's like an essential part of the life, you know, because of the way it's depicted in the movies. And to a degree, it's, it's, it's correct. Not all true, but to a degree, it's correct. These stereotypes can reinforce negative assumptions and biases about certain, certain ethnic groups. Well, that's true. I mean, we're talking about the mafia here. And let me tell you something. Legitimate, good Italian people, hardworking people, they don't like the mafia stuff. They think it makes them look bad, and to a degree it does. You know, if you've got a vowel at the end of your name and you're in trouble, they right away think you're mafia. And a lot of hardworking, legitimate Italians don't like it. They don't look up to mob guys. They don't like it. I can tell you that for a fact. And I understand that because anytime you stereotype a, uh, you know, a, an ethnic group, it's no good. It really isn't good unless it's a good stereotype, you know, some good quality about these people. But, uh, yeah, I mean, the way it's portrayed, some mob guys look like them, these, and those guys, and it's not all true. Influence on fashion and pop culture. Very interesting because the, uh, the mob, you know, uh, wardrobe now for women is coming back. It's in style. And uh, it's being portrayed in a lot of different ways. My daughter did a, a thing for it for our wine company and got, you know, a couple hundred thousand views on it. So people actually like it. Like it. And uh, nothing wrong with that. The fashion, language, and mannerisms depicted in mafia movies and TV shows have influenced popular culture. No doubt. 100%. But what's wrong with that? Certain phrases. Oh, come on. You know, listen. You know, how many 
movies have there been? I love the Bronx Tale. Now you can't leave. How many times have you heard that? You know, just a great thing. How many from The Godfather have we heard? I'm going to make him an offer you can't refuse. You know, just stuff like that. But hey, you know, nothing wrong with that. You know, this is what movies do. But sometimes I think those phrases are looked at like, wow, this is amazing. You know, this group has been amazing. You know, I don't know. But uh, it certainly has an impact on us. I, I use that. I'm going to make him an offer you can't refuse. You know, I've done that many times. Um, you know, but listen, that's all about the movies. I don't know if that was a line that was really used on the street. Okay, but the movies made it popular. Uh, certain phrases, clothing styles, and even iconic movie scenes have become synonymous with the mafia, further shaping public perception. Yes. Look, Vito Corleone, uh, you know, uh, Marlon Brando, he just, it was such an amazing role. And he elevated the perception of a mafia don, no doubt about it. You know, Lucky Luciano, when you saw, um, you know, photos of him, you know, dress sharp, Frank Costello the same way. You know, you just had this elevated view of a mafia boss. And some of them should be depicted that way. You look at Chin Gigante, he was on the opposite end because he wanted to be low key. He didn't want to be recognized. And he walked around, as you know, with a bathrobe, his hair all messed up, unshaven. You know, but uh, we get from the movies, you know, we get our perception of that life. And it's, it's both ways. Carlo Gambino, I don't think he was a sharp dresser. Joe Colombo was terrific. John Gotti, of course, I haven't mentioned John yet. Can you imagine getting through a whole thing without mentioning John Gotti? But the Dapper Don, look at him. You know, people wanted to look like him, wanted to be like him. He exuded power, class. My father, the same thing in the 60s. If you see some of the photos with that, you know, beautiful trench coat that he had on and his hair in the right way, you know, he looked important and powerful. The movies do this, you know, in a way. And, you know, some of that is real life, quite honestly. So um, it's important to note that while Hollywood's portrayal of the mafia may be entertaining, it often deviates from the harsh realities of organized crime. Public perception should be informed uh, by, a more uh, by a more nuanced understanding of the negative impact of these criminal organizations on society. And yeah, that's true. Look, you know, we look up to certain mob guys and the lifestyle because of the way we've perceived it in the movies. Many of us, like I say, or many of you out there, I should say, haven't had any real life experience with that life. Uh, and if you had, some of it might be good and some of it might be negative. But the bottom line, people, I don't care what group you're in, you just can't continue to engage in criminal activity. It's not good, you know, period. It's a dead end street in many ways. You know, what's happening today in our society is horrible. These criminal organizations that are robbing stores and, you know, hurting people on the streets and doing the things that they're doing, uh, you know, they're no good. And any criminal organization just needs to be put under control and out of business. And that's what I believe. And I don't want everybody to go to jail. I don't want to, I, I just, it would be better if we didn't have that. But we will continue to have it until the end of time because that's just reality. That's what humanity is. There's good and bad and there's, you know, there's, there's criminal and there's legitimate. It's always going to be that way. You're not going to clean it up. So, uh, but remember when you're watching the movies and everything, don't take it at, you know, take it at face value. Don't say, this is what it's all about. That's it. You know, and do realize that the, uh, the movies and television, they are in, in many ways shaping, uh, and forming your perception of those lives. So, Hopefully you get it, you know, you understand. I just thought it was interesting. We do talk about the mafia a bit on this, you know. I'm not going to make up stories, but when I see something interesting, I'm going to bring it by you and, you know, we have good discussion about it. That's what it's all about. So that's it for today, my friends. How do I always leave you? Same way. Be safe. Be healthy. God bless each and every one of you and your family and your loved one and your neighbors and everyone that you want blessed. Yes, I'll see you next time. Take care.